The Warriors aren't just participating in the postseason this year. They're in a relentless pursuit of another NBA title. The other way, LeBron, Clay, Green. Oh, look at that block! After watching countless hours of game footage these past few weeks and analyzing the playoff landscape, I've uncovered a unique insight that seems to have slipped past everyone else. Four threes! Final three seconds, Pajemski. What matchups might the Warriors face in the postseason? Which teams hold an advantage over them, and which ones might struggle against Golden State's style of play? And most importantly, why do I think they're perfectly poised for a finals run? Just dealing with everybody else. Step for three. Got it! Of course. In this video, we're diving deep into everything about the Golden State Warriors and the 2024 playoffs. So listen closely, stay glued to your screen, and as always, buckle up, because we're going for a wild ride. I realize that many viewers might dismiss this as just another video of me trying to gaslight the Warriors, but the truth is, those who are making these claims likely aren't watching enough basketball. This has been something else tonight. The back door to Kaminga! It's not just about the Warriors, it's about keeping tabs on the whole NBA and noting what's happening. Put an eye on uh, Giannis here, he just sat down on the floor. The fact is, many contending teams reached their peak a few months back and are now visibly declining, while others that seemed completely off track are currently hitting their stride and looking as dangerous as ever. And uh, this is exactly why the Golden State Warriors are currently flying under the radar. People are judging them based on their 10th seed ranking and their performances a few months back, completely missing out on the fact that they're peaking and have transformed entirely. I mean, currently, the Warriors have won eight of their last nine games, dominating their opponents as if it were their magical run of 2016 all over again. The rebound, Draymond, play three, knocks it down! The Warriors and Rockets matchup on April 4th is a prime example of what I'm talking about. Against a Houston squad that was desperately battling for a playoff spot in their own arena, the Warriors completely outplayed them for the full 48 minutes. Steph, Clay, and the entire starting lineup, as well as the bench players, now fully grasped their roles, with the team's pecking order and lineups also clearly established, as evidenced by their gameplay. Curry will stop a three of his own. GP2 tipped it in! Houston was completely outmatched in this game by Golden State. And despite being closely ranked as the 10th and 11th seeds, there seemed to be a vast ocean separating their levels of play. Jackson Davis on Van Vliet, and Moody clean it up! The following games further highlighted the Warriors' potential. The next matchup against the Mavericks, for example, where both teams were down two key players, and although the Warriors ultimately lost at the 11th hour, they demonstrated just who they were by erasing a 13-29 deficit in the blink of an eye. Ball down to two, Chris Paul three, come on! Against the Jazz, it became clear how deep the Warriors roster really is. Even without their leader, Steph Curry, the team band together around Clay, who has been playing the best basketball of his career post-injury. And even though Johnny Juzang was on fire, making seven out of eight shots from long range, the Jazz didn't stand a chance. It was a relentless onslaught from the Warriors, leaving the Jazz no breathing space whatsoever. Adding to their domination, Kaminga returned from a knee injury, bringing another dimension of attack for the Warriors. Strength in numbers was evident throughout, and it was crystal clear after this game, despite a season fraught with challenges, the Warriors had finally come into their own, solidifying their status as a formidable contender. If anyone still needed convincing, the very next game against the Lakers highlighted the Warriors' true drive, illustrating their aiming much higher than merely securing a play-in position. So, not over a lot of energy. And a free foul Reeves. Count it out. This game held immense significance for the Lakers in terms of playoff positioning, as they were on the verge of securing the coveted seventh or eighth seed. And it was evident that the Lakers were determined as LeBron James was completely locked in, inspiring every Lakers player to follow his lead. However, even with the Lakers playing with urgency at home in front of a crowd of 19,000 and LeBron spearheading the effort, the Warriors showcased their full potential when operating at full strength. Game. Why not? Why not? Why not? 
The top three teams in the Western Conference, Timberwolves, OKC, and Nuggets, must be feeling the pressure because the Warriors team potentially facing them in the first round is far from your typical 10th seed. From shooting to passing to off-ball movements to the performances of the stars, starters, and bench players, everything was in sync as the Warriors dominated both the Lakers and the referees simultaneously. It has been extraordinary. 25 and now 26. Following that win, the Warriors remained in the 10th seed, but let's consider their potential opponents in the play-in tournament. They could face a Phoenix Suns team that was dominated by a Clippers squad missing Harden and Kawhi, a Sacramento Kings team missing their third leading scorer, Malik Monk, and a Lakers team they just convincingly defeated from start to finish. Honestly, landing in the latter half of the play-in tournament might be exactly what the doctor ordered. I mean, it's like facing two consecutive Game 7s, which will mentally fortify them for the hurdles ahead in the first round. The seasoned veterans of the Warriors have experienced these situations time and again, but the young guns like Kaminga, Moody, Podzimski, and Trace Jackson Davis have yet to even encounter such scenarios or make significant contributions to them. These games will truly immerse them in the mindset where every possession counts, which will be crucial, particularly against a team like Denver. Peyton Watson, Jokic from Murray. Oh! Now let's examine the potential matchups that could benefit the Warriors moving forward and those that may pose challenges. In the first round, their opponents could be the Timberwolves, Nuggets, or OKC. Initially, I hope the Warriors could dodge the Nuggets and face any of the younger teams first to refine themselves for an eventual clash against the Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals. However, given their current form, it no longer seems to matter. In fact, facing the Nuggets earlier might even be more beneficial for the Warriors now. Because firstly, they'll be already fine-tuned from back-to-back -back Game 7s. And secondly, to be perfectly honest, what concerns me if they were to meet later in the playoffs is, as you've probably already guessed, Chris Paul's hamstring. Something he has played with before, but he is definitely hurting now. There are questions as to how, what kind of shape he will be in for Game 6. Time and again, CP3 has encountered injuries in the postseason, yet they've never stuck in the first round. Nevertheless, when it comes to facing the Nuggets, I anticipate the entire NBA will be in for a revelation. While stopping Jokic may seem an impossible task, the combined efforts of Trace Jackson Davis, Kevon Looney, and Draymond Green could potentially slow him down. A lob threat at that position, at the five position, like Jackson Davis. Here's how I envision Golden State approaching Jokic in the Nuggets. Defensively, they'll probably opt for a one-on-one -on -one matchup against him, allowing him to score 40 or 50 points per game. This strategy aims to limit his ability to facilitate for his teammates by drawing double teams and finding open shooters for three-pointers, which is crucial for getting the rest of his team involved. Keep moving. Let him find you a mover. Out to Christian Brown. When facing Jokic, teams often find themselves having to pick their own poison, and this approach might be the lesser of two evils. In addition, this approach aims to wear him down. On the offensive end, I see the Warriors repeatedly exploiting Jokic in high pick and roll situations. Despite being one of the premier offensive threats in today's NBA, his defensive capabilities are perhaps only slightly above average at best. With each play, the Warriors will relentlessly target Jokic on both offense and defense, aiming to exhaust him and transform the game into a battle of attrition. However, let me clarify, while I see the Warriors capable of holding their ground against the defending champions, the Nuggets could still very well come out on top in this matchup. As highlighted by JJ Redick and LeBron's discussion on their podcast, at the pinnacle of basketball, it's often the team with superior basketball IQ that wins. And although the Nuggets are no slouch in this aspect, given their track record of four championships and six finals appearances, I believe the Warriors will have the upper hand in this department. I predict Golden State winning this series in six or seven games. Honestly, beyond that, the next formidable challenge will likely only arise in the finals because assessing the Western landscape, no team seems to pose a significant threat to the Warriors. While the Timberwolves and OKC show promise, they still appear a year or two too young to contend. On the other hand, KD and the Suns appear to have numerous weaknesses. 
It's honestly baffling to see them struggle against a Clippers team missing two key players, especially when they themselves are fully healthy and fighting to avoid the play-in tournament. Next up are the Mavericks, who are essentially just a two-man team. While they may produce numerous highlight reels and possibly snatch a game or two, overall, the Warriors will outclass them. The Pelicans could present a challenge, but without Brandon Ingram, they're lacking in firepower. Similarly, the Kings are without Malik Monk, which diminishes their potential. And as for the Clippers? Well, Kawhi Leonard is already beginning to show signs that he'll begin load managing soon. <laughs> Honestly, the only team that worries me are the Lakers. With the NBA's narrative favoring LeBron James as the greatest of all time, the Warriors may find themselves not only facing the Lakers on the court, but also contending with referees, potentially granting the Lakers an extra 20 to 30 free throws every other game. Anyway, if the Warriors don't end up facing the Lakers, this playoff scenario appears to be another golden opportunity for them to mount a serious charge toward the finals. Wouldn't you agree? One team that won't be making a finals run anytime soon, however, is the Houston Rockets. I mean, one of their players recently made a colossal mistake with an Instagram post, and it was downright hilarious. If you're curious about what I'm referring to, click on this video and give it a watch, because trust me when I say, it'll absolutely be worth your time. 